cop pulls over a car, but when the driver rolls down his window, his life changes forever. Michael Patterson, who loved his work, was a state trooper. He was pulling a vehicle over on a regular day on the highway for tinted windows that were way too dark. However, he was unaware that it was not going to be a regular stop. It would turn out to be something unexpected and something that he would not forget for the rest of his life. It was supposed to be a simple job. Unfortunately, there was no way for him to know who he was going to encounter. Once the window rolled down, a conversation began that would forever alter the life of both men. And all of this was due to the tinted windows. When Michael Patterson began his day, he assumed that this day, like all the others, would be a normal day as well. Most of his work as a state trooper was to keep the roads and highways secure. He spent a great part of his day pulling over individuals when they broke the rules. When you perform a traffic stop once, you have performed a traffic stop a thousand times. He notices the offense, pulls over the vehicle, and writes a ticket. There is nothing unique about it. Especially since most offenses are usually speed-related, so it gets stale pretty fast. Along with the fact that he has to deal with individuals who are, obviously, not happy to see him. He noticed a car standing out when he was patrolling the Kingwood Township Highway. It was a beautiful summer day at the beginning of June, and he was hurried by a white BMW on the other lane next to him. The BMW, unlike most of the stops he generally made, did not speed or drive erratically. The car instead had windows that appeared to be tinted far beyond the legal limit. He wondered how in the world the driver could even see through them. Most people are tinting their windows, and this is not a big deal. Sometimes though, when they're so dark they can't see through them, it turns into a large deal. If you tint your windows too much, you will restrict your visibility. That's what was going on here, so Michael realized that he was required to figure out what was going on. He didn't want anybody else or the driver to get harmed, so he had to do his obligation as an officer. Usually, for tinted windows, you won't be pulled over. Most of the tints are completely acceptable and something everyone uses to keep their eyes safe from the sun. However, it may occur, but it's definitely not your usual ticket. You're looking for a ticket if your tint is too dark or above the legal threshold. Cops are generally too busy to hand out tint tickets, of course, but not in this situation. Michael chose to pull the vehicle over and check stuff out because of the somewhat shady tinting of the window. To turn his sirens and lights on, the 26-year-old state trooper flipped the switch and performed a stop. They were immediately notified that they were being pulled over and stopped at the end of the highway. The driver was waiting for the usual scenario, an unfortunate fee to be paid and an officer scolding. That wasn't what happened at all though. As he got out of his vehicle to talk to the BMW driver, Michael left his lights flashing. He was a nice guy, generally, he was very friendly with the individuals he pulled over even though they still had difficulty with the law. So the two men started chatting when Michael walked over to the front windows of the BMW and met the driver. Both of them began to discover stuff about each other and eventually made an amazing discovery. The driver was quite upset when Michael pulled him over. He realized he wasn't speeding or anything like that, so it was just mildly awkward when he heard it was because of his tint. And the insane thing is that he was supposed to know precisely what the legal limit was. Would you like to understand why? You are going to be astonished. The guy used to be a policeman himself, as it would turn out. He was used to the laws because before he retired he was a policeman for 30 years. He loved his job and it was a big deal for him. It wasn't one of his finest moments to get pulled over for a tint job. He knew how to handle it however, so it wasn't going to be too large of a deal. Or so he was thinking. The cop didn't try to get in trouble with another cop, he just really enjoyed how his BMW looked like with the tint. He wasn't going to put up a battle when he found out that it was actually beyond the legal limit. He realized he was required to fix it so it wasn't going to be so dark, he just needed to speak to the individuals who put it on. When Michael found out the guy was a policeman, a discussion began that was fairly simple to keep up with. Meeting a cop out while on duty was fairly cool, and so they began a discussion about the job. In just a few minutes, they were able to bond, and it turned out to be one of Michael's most significant discussions in his life. 
It would alter his life in an unbelievable way. The interaction of the men was caught on the body cam of Michael and also on the cameras of his vehicle. He was so grateful later to have a record of what turned out to be an encounter he would get only once in a lifetime. For several minutes, the two men chatted, and Michael learned everything about the driver. What was supposed to be a routine traffic stop continued to get longer and longer. The name of the driver was Matthew Bailey, and he was also a policeman. Retired. In fact, Matthew Bailey retired as a police officer. The two guys still had a lot in common though. Meeting a fellow policeman was always lovely, particularly by chance on the job during a regular day. Matthew started explaining that in another city, not too far away, he had worked for the force. He was about 40 miles away from their present place from Piscataway. When Michael heard this piece of information, he couldn't imagine what would follow. They began to talk about things that were random. It was all about their jobs at first. They spoke of being policemen and the crazy things they'd see every day. As they spoke of this, the history of the driver started to unfold. He wasn't recognized by Michael, so he asked if he was a policeman in the same town. The guy said he was not. It wasn't until he told Michael where he was from that Michael gasped. Michael spoke to the person and learned that Matthew was his name. Well, Matthew said he wasn't in the same town, but in a few cities away he was actually a policeman as well. Michael was surprised when he said where. It was a city in which he was born. And in reality, in the city, his mom still resided. He was so amazed that in his hometown this policeman was the one who was once patrolling the streets. When Matthew questioned how old Michael was, asking someone older like that seemed like a very weird issue. But as they discovered that they were from the same city, Michael began to have some doubts. He knew about a couple of cops in the city, but he wasn't sure if it could be the same policeman he was thinking about. He might have saved his life if it was. Happened 26 years ago. There was a weird event that occurred 26 years ago. It was nothing like it was supposed to be, and in the craziest tale ever Michael was born. He had never told anybody about this though. So when Matthew, the guy he pulled over, began to ask questions, it took him time to find out everything. Could that be what he thought it was? Hometown. His ears were automatically perked up when Michael heard that Matthew was from Piscataway. It's been his hometown. What were the chances he ran into a fellow officer from his hometown? Now that they knew how much they had to talk about, the two people discovered it was extremely simple to continue their discussion. Michael was so pleased to inform him he was born in Piscataway and knew the city very well. When Matthew found out that the trooper was born back in 1991 in Piscataway, he had to get more information. He remembered an incident that took place almost 30 years ago and wanted to understand if Michael was somehow engaged in it. Michael disclosed that the 5th of October 1991 was his birthday. Matthew was could not believe what he heard. He immediately shot another question back, wondering on which road he grew up in Piscataway. He was sitting and wondering, but Michael was fairly sure it was precisely who he thought it was. They would have to come to the realization themselves, of course. They began to outline the details of what occurred over 26 years ago one night. As they began relaying it out, they realized in a totally unlikely turn of events that they might have encountered before. It's about to get insane. The suspicions of Matthew were verified when he heard the answer to the question from Michael. Michael grew up on a road called Poe Place, the same place where on October 5, 1991, a then still young policeman Matthew was called upon. Matthew could not believe that he might very well have been met by this state trooper years earlier. He leaned out of his window a little further to inform Michael of the whole story a tale he had been holding close to his core for years. Matthew vividly recalled Poe Place. It was a small, dead-end road in the small town that was likely not known to most individuals. Back when he was a brand new police officer, on that road, Bailey went to respond to a call. At that time, he was still a rookie, young and with only four years under his belt. When he received a call from dispatch that sent him to Poe Place, he was on patrol in the tiny town. Women understand that labor will be inevitable at some stage when they are pregnant. It's just that they do not know how soon they're going to go into labor, and that's the issue. 
Women spend days asking themselves if the child is coming or not. Usually, however, they have a few hours of lower contractions to prepare for a job. That's how this labor was very distinct from any other labor out there. She will experience contractions for quite a while when a female goes into labor. They're going to begin slowly and then speed up as they get closer to delivering the child. It's one of life's facts. Not every female has this happen to them though. Occasionally, labor is going to go on much longer or much slower than they generally believe. And it's when women aren't ready for it when it gets quicker. She was in labor before, and she didn't remember feeling like that. It was much calmer and not almost as intense, and she knew it wasn't normal with such breaks between contractions. It was going to be a crazy adventure, she was already able to say that. So, she knew something had to be done so she didn't have the child on the street side. When they really aren't, many females will believe they're in labor, and Michael's mother was a little concerned about that. She didn't want to be the woman who thinks she is in labor when she wasn't really giving birth. So, she decided to call her husband to see what he was going to say. She remained quite calm, but as she waited, the pain became more intense. She realized the child was coming as she waited. It wouldn't remain long enough in there to make it to the hospital all the way. She called the rushed husband, but they didn't know what else to do. So, they were calling both their doctor and calling 911. They informed her they sent a police officer to assist during the delivery of the child, as they're all trained to do that. He hurried to the scene as quickly as possible when dispatch notified Matthew that a young lady named Karen was in a severe condition at Poe Place. He kicked in all of his instincts and walked to the small road to assist as much as he could. Karen was a young lady at the moment who was married and pregnant for about 39 weeks. When she went to labor both unexpectedly and quickly, her husband called the police for some help since he was not home. Karen approached her due date, but on October 5th she did not expect to give birth to her second child. She decided to go with her elderly son, Tarek, to run some shopping chores at the grocery store. He was 10 years old, and for their journey to the shop, everything seemed okay. Karen knew that something was wrong though, halfway through her shopping. She began to have contractions that confirmed her that her new child was making his way into a new life. Rather than having tiny contractions that began far apart, Karen's got very intense, very fast, as most labors do not start. Her contractions were so serious that she could hardly walk back to her car, and in extreme pain, she fell over. She hoped the labor would slowly approach, so Karen decided to pay as quickly as possible for her groceries and get home. Her and Tarek hurried to the vehicle and returned to Poe Place. Karen discovered rapidly that she did not have a lot of time. Luckily, Poe Place wasn't too far from the grocery shop, so she could make it home safely. For the length of the drive, she held her legs tightly linked and attempted to breathe through the pain. Tarek was afraid of seeing his mom in such pain, particularly when he could do nothing to assist. His dad, fortunately, was waiting to assist his spouse through the scenario at home. As quickly as they got home, Karen's husband Bobby hurried outside to help his wife. He picked her up and took her inside where she could lie more comfortably. He called Karen's doctor and 9-1-1 as quickly as she was cared for. He realized this was an urgent situation and in time for birth, there was no way they could get it to the hospital. They required professional assistance, and they required it rapidly. When Officer Bailey arrived at the scene, Karen and Bobby were so happy. He had been sent by dispatch since he was Poe Place's nearest police officer. There was no time to waste when he came, 